Hi, this podcast is for beginners, enthusiasts, professionals, and everyone busy about photography. If you love photography and want to be in the know of the who's, what's, the where's, and how's of this industry, then this is just right for you. But hey, don't just listen, put a new lesson to use. My name is Ben, and I'm your host. Yeah, I'm fair, it's with me, and we're just going to carry on. I've started this session like five times now, and there's no perfect start, so please guys, just listen and enjoy the conversation and learn something and use what you learn, please. Um, I'm fair, how are you doing? I'm doing well, I'm all right. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, I'm fair and I have actually been talking for like some minutes now. Hours. Hours. It's been hours. How about now? It's not up to. I'm missing. <laughs> okay, so we're talking for some minutes now. And we actually don't know each other so much, except that I know that she's a really, really brilliant. Sorry, she's right in front of me. So you are a really, really brilliant visual artist. And um, today is going to be a bit different um, for um, Silver because what we've been doing is meeting established photographers seemingly and um asking i mean there's no there's no final point like we are all growing we're all in that process of becoming and mastering our our craft as photographers um no one is no one is the jagaban you know yeah um but right now you've considered yourself as someone who doesn't focus on photography like full-time you have some other aspects uh, of visual art where you pour um, or you invest yourself into a lot, right? So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how photography is a second thing for you and how that is working out for you. So first things first, why, why, why do you bother at all with photography? Um, I see photography, um, like you mentioned, I see photography as something I do on the side. Um, I see it as um, my escape when I can't really create fine art, I mean. So um, when I'm having like a creative block and stuff, I get to like create um, using photography as my medium. So if I'm not able to express myself visually in arts, in fine arts, I use photography to actually express myself. And um, starting photography to me started off as um, I was, I basically just had a camera um, from someone who was owing me money and I didn't know what to do with it. So it started off as me just taking flowers and taking landscapes and stuff. Yeah. I didn't really, <laughs> I didn't really understand what I was doing till I started enjoying the pictures I was taking and I started realizing that, okay, there were times when I needed to like express myself. There were times when I needed to create um, that I wasn't exactly with like pen and paper. I wasn't with things I could, I wasn't with materials, but I had like a phone, I had a camera sometimes too so i use those to like just document the things i wanted to see or i just use them as um i just use them to take down inspirations so i can like create on later on yeah okay so um how many like what 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 have been your best achievements so far like with your journey or in your journey as a photographer my biggest achievement actually was when I um, went to Bamako, when, when I attended the Bamako Biennial, when I showed off sites. Um, I went there with the Linley Institute. It was really amazing because I never really saw myself eye up there and I didn't think I was fit enough for that opportunity. So like getting to exhibit at a Biennial, even though it was off site, was a big deal and getting recognized because at some point it felt like we stole the show because mm. a lot of people came around and they were like nice, nice pleasantries like it was so good and it's just been a moment like it's been a particular period in my life that i so much appreciate and i'm really thankful for mm. yeah i i think I've, I've seen you at um one of your exhibitions where it was it was with, like a group of other lady photographers at uh, freedom park oh yeah no, uh, it wasn't just lady yeah, yeah, yeah it was it was it was i think i'm mixing it up there yeah. were guys and they were yeah, girls yeah, too, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 I was there for a lady, my G, and your last. So. <laughs> and that was living desires, huh? Living desires, living desires. Yeah. yeah. So I, I really liked your, like how you were able to, um, use your skill as a fine art, as a fine artist. You know. Yeah. You you, you kind of merged that, you know, with your photography. So, 
one one sees that creative expression still coming out even in your pictures you know uh, very conceptual and uh what do you call it like imaginative you know you just kind of bring something that is not in the obvious like documentary photography yeah. i don't think like would we'll, would we'll be opposites right true in that in that sense i used to i used to try to do conceptual like that year like 20 <laughs> something like 2016 uh, I, I'll, I'll probably find my way most times it's not even mm. conscious actually most times i just find myself doing it but i realized that mm. it could also be because of the fact that um i'm first a fine artist or i was first a fine artist before i became a photographer so sometimes it, like you said it actually tells on my creation on my no, creative process when you say you were first a fine artist like how long ago um i've been doing visual arts um since i've known myself i'm talking about since five mm. five um fi- um fi- when i was five years old um mm. but i never really took it seriously till um, 2015. that's about five years ago that's nice yeah if she's done like so well you've done so well um i don't know why i'm i think i'm doing this stuff today like it's radio show i don't know why. <laughs> okay so but you've done so well for you know someone who just started five years ago you know as a visual artist and you did not and when i say so well for please nobody all these people that used to attack people that, people that are speaking bad english even should not come for me <laughs> because I'm, i mean well okay get the message um i'm really trying to say like you did you told me you studied microbiology right yeah i did when did you graduate 2018 <laughs> although i had a career over oh so from 2015 you're probably still in school yeah i was in my year two year two yeah uh uni lag yeah and how <laughs> <laughs> like how what well, do you guys have like free time like how did you balance that because for most people in school the excuse is you know time we have lots of ass- ass- assignments sorry we have lots of assignments and stuff like was it was how why why how 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 Hone- did it honestly it was killing it was f- very frustrating because i was i was in misfit in school mm. um from the from year one i had issues not issues per se but i just had issues with how people like saw me um i was basically just the one who never really fitted in did you get so um fitting sorry <laughs> <laughs> so uh, um we plenty for this, <laughs> for this stuff. yeah so yeah. basically i had to sacrifice things sacrifice things in sex i had to sacrifice my social life if i really needed to pay attention to science and also pay attention to my craft and i wasn't I wasn't really serious with my craft um, till I actually got to year two, cause um, year one I was basically just trying to get good grades and stuff. I wanted like to start with, um, I wanted a good foundation in school so that I could pursue my talent. I, sh- I could pursue my passion. So I had mm-hmm. to like start off well. So I used year one to really read. I used year one to like get my grades high mm-hmm. and then year two i started taking it i just started taking art more seriously so most times when my friends are going out to like party and stuff i never really did because i used to be the kind of person who liked i was i, was, I used to be an intro um, outro, um hey. <laughs> <laughs> extra i meant i'm so sorry <laughs> well i'm still not cutting it out okay <laughs> All right, all right. You. I used to be an extrovert, okay. right? But I had to like I had to replace that to actually create more, to learn, to discover myself more. So mm-hmm. um when I got here to I wasn't really going out like that. I'm not saying it's entirely good. I mean it was kind of balanced. There were times when I still had to like chill. There were times when I um, I had to like socialize mm-hmm. just to get inspiration and just to get to um communicate with people. But like most of the time I was really just creating if I wasn't going to classes and truthfully speaking I wasn't really attending classes I was ditching classes because I usually I used to get bored in class and most times when I'm there I'm not really there my mind is somewhere else I'm probably sketching someone mm. or, so I used to get in trouble and but I replaced all of that um for when I had to like read so if people are reading once I have to like read five times because I mean I wasn't really present in class I had to like do arts I had to do side also I was working for Uber, I was working for Indomie, just yeah, so I could, what? yeah, I was working as um, an ambassador and a marketer for them. Mm. So they were like student jobs that I could do to fill my passion because my parents at that time, they must not hear that. They're not saying <laughs> you, <are> your <laughs> They didn't you? send me to do arts in school, do you get? So wow. like, I had to, I had to like find side also because 
obviously i couldn't use my pocket money to get materials because it wasn't enough at the time so i had to like find ways to get materials to work and um yeah um so uh it was basically it was basically all of those things i was pursuing so um at the time when it was time for exams i just had to like read extra so i can meet up yeah from year two my results honestly started dropping but it wasn't so bad because i mean i started off good that was the plan and i just really wanted to finish school so i could pursue my talent because that was the deal i had with my parents so that's basically how it happened for me (laughs) well like the parents too i mean I, I think I've seen you talk about like your parents. I, I'm sure they are sweet, but it's really, it's really something, right? Like our parents really just think, just get through with the school. Do you think you're going to do something with microbiology at uh, some point? Well, uh, I used to think that I would never do anything um, with microbiology um, until recently. Um, I'm talking late 2019. I realized mm-hmm. that actually can't it's actually not a waste at the end of the day because um there are some things i was taught in school that i can relate to my arts i can relate to my um my photography too Mm. so um talking about microorganisms and all those things there are some times when even i i unconsciously scribble microorganisms in my works and (laughs) i haven't exactly found a way to like relate it or to explain the reason it's there but i feel like the reason i'm um uh, there's definitely a reason I'm doing it and I'm just yeah. here to discover it, yeah. right? And then I'm also able to like um relate it to um the whole idea of me scribbling first started from Jaka Jaga, things not making sense and everything and microbiology, yeah, to see microorganisms. In fact you can't see microorganisms with your naked eyes. You need to like use a microscope to actually get to see it also. So it's the same thing. You really need to like put lines together sometimes. You need you need to see like the end of um the end of a process of lines actually understanding you need to see like a finished work a finished scribble work for you for you understanding so um some have been able to relate those tangible things together it's still like a work in progress though but it's not completely a waste for me actually it's not completely a waste yeah i relate because yeah. um i told people i studied international law and diplomacy right wow. which is <laughs> 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 i think well, it must come yeah I tell you the mask come. I Thank just guess. Thank you. <laughs> that I have a mask come destiny, right? That it looks like that, right? Yeah. I wanted it bad. I wanted to do mask come bad. But guess what? <laughs> I didn't get that. <laughs> and in fact, I'd gotten into uni and I'd already started like three weeks into international law and diplomacy when my admission into my dream school, don't ask me because a lot of people <laughs> will just hate me if I tell them my dream school then. <laughs> my dream school... Okay, let me just I'm come. curious. No, I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious. Okay, my dream school was Covenant University. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, my dream school then put out the result like Batch C, Mass Communication, Benita, Nachotam. And I'm like, why? I actually <laughs> cried. I actually cried because <laughs> I started at Bakok Uni and I didn't want to. <laughs> I, oh. I really didn't want to. Oh, my God. Please. Great Babcock, great Babcock. I really don't I see much everyone. difference, though. I get everyone from Babcock. <laughs> no, I don't hate, but I mean, this is the 2009, 2010 me, right? Um, I tried to get into C like twice, so maybe it's for a reason I didn't. My point here is um, what I studied today, I just can't help but have a global picture to everything. I feel like I'm very international minded in <laughs> scope of planning, in scope of relationships, in in scope of my career, in scope of impact. It's it's just the way and if you see if you know me well like and you see like my footprints, the kind of things that I'm involved with, you, you get that picture. Like it somehow still comes around somehow so sometimes like people who are still in school especially if someone is listening right now and person is in school and feeling like oh well this is me we're on this table together <laughs> you know um it's not the end of the world really you can just honor your parents by going through with it if you're so sure about dropping out and you say oh i'm going to drop everything it might not really be easy you know yeah i really because right now you still need your parents support don't you like yeah from time to time. Do. yeah um might not really be easy, uh, but if you're determined to make it work for your 
for your craft because you know what you know, right? Then just do it. Like, like you said, you did how many jobs? Like, <laughs> I was I was doing lots of side jobs. Like anybody who knows me, like who knows me from mini log, actually knows me to be one also picking. That's what this COVID. Also there. picking. I used to also like I used to also so bad, and it wasn't just because I was trying to be rich. I was really just trying to follow my passion. Mm. That was just there. I was trying to find means to get material so I could work. By this time, had, did you have photography as part of the hustle game? I mean, I was using my phone then. Wow. But it wasn't. Mm. It wasn't. It wasn't my also. Mm. Wasn't my also then. I I hadn't collected the camera from the person. Okay. 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 <laughs> so um, uh, let me think. Was it the the wall murals? I know you do. Sorry, what morale really? Yeah, it's it's like actually, the morale. Like yeah, do you, you do. Morale um, too? I wasn't even doing morales when I was in um uni lag. I started doing morales after I finished oh. school, right? And even talking so, about, so, I'm sorry. So that must have been like hustle outside of your <laughs> core passion, right? Yeah, like it wasn't connected to art. It wasn't in any way connected to art. Oh wow, because people didn't know you. Like you didn't have like the portfolio, I guess. Then. Yeah, and like. A lot of people actually just thought I was getting money from, like I was just a rich kid, mm. but they didn't really know that I was actually doing a lot of on that G work on and that G. Um, <laughs> on that G work. Trust this me. Define on that G. Uh, these days, on that G it. work is actually <laughs> when you're hired by Uber to get people to sign up for the app, and then you go as far as going to the roadside to get people to use the app and use your promo code so you can get paid. Wow. Yeah, that's un- <laughs> that's How many you for to, like, me. Talk to in a day. I had to like meet ridiculous people, but then I had to like drop my ego because I mean I was trying to get something, and mm. that was the only way I could speed up my chat. Yeah, right. I I was doing that inside at first, but I wasn't making as much. And then the moment I stepped out, man, I started like it went I like my pace started going high. So, mm. but it was only for a short time because at some point. They had to like close the old business thing because mm. someone was actually doing fraud in the old stuff. So oh. yeah, so but um, I think it was wise enough that I had to like save while other people were partying. So I saved. I did a lot of savings for the rainy days and stuff. Yeah. So I'm going to quote you on that. I had mm. to save while other people were partying. I want to turn up, guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, um, okay, that makes sense. So let's let's talk about let's talk about your photography you know career or i don't even know if i can put it that way <laughs> it's because, a career too yeah it yeah. is right um I, have i asked you already because we've talked we've talked before now so i don't <laughs> I, maybe i've diluted the g's but we just have to talk about it again okay. right, for sake of those listening um you told me you featured in about three photography exhibitions yeah, yeah you mentioned one i've mentioned one which yeah. one which one was the other one um there was um this lagos life with smo contemporary oh, um nice. yeah it was with five other photographers uh, it was actually this year with amanda Iheme. amanda Iheme, logo um yeah. nelly Atting. yeah um, great I, guys that's what I, I think I yeah but it. i wasn't available because i was at the amatan workshop Oh, that that's something else. But you were there for, you were there to birth your new dimension of creative expression. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I like what you do. You guys should just follow Ion Fair already. Like, if you don't, um, A Y A N F double E double underscores. Double underscore. Yeah, on Instagram, double underscores. Why? Oh, I, I thought it was just one. Okay, well, you get the picture. So, um, I like what you're doing now. Now that has also featured what. That thing, that seed that you went to sew at the Hamatan <laughs> workshop is coming out to life now. And yeah, you can glad. see that with the Sculpting the City uh, yeah. exhibition, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That, 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 that is unique. That is new. I like that you were able to pour out your jagajai. Jagaizim. Jagaizim? Yeah. Okay, just jag. No, it's not too. Okay. Yeah. You're, you were able to pour out your jagaizim into sculpting. Yeah. That I think that was fabulous. Well, how is that going for you with photography? Are you planning on making that movement, that art movement that you've, you know, kind of just owned? Um, are you trying to pour that into photography as well, or you're just you're just still very experimental? Um, I would say I'm experimental, and and also uh, yeah, I would say I'm experimental, and um, I'm currently working on uh, mixing my merging my arts and my photography together. I haven't exactly figured it out, but I'm basically just trying out new things. Um, um, I've been doing lots of uh, paper collages, montage works, 
and stuff but i haven't put them out yet because of the fear of the unknown mm. right um so uh, i'm basically i'm really just experimenting for now these days i get to like take pictures of my materials i get to take pictures of my process like while creating in art visual art mm-hmm. fine art sorry mm-hmm. yeah while doing that and sometimes i do a mix of scribble and photography together i do that um digitally sometimes i do that like after i've like cut out pictures that i've taken mm. cut out pictures to put them together to like form a story right then i now scribble over it or i paint over it so i have experiments like that that i'm currently so it's like still, it's still pretty much part of your creative process yes it's but it does is. it ever pay off though now the, i know you, we've talked about this but tell me like which one pays you more you know when you focus on the sorry to compare but just for <laughs> for learning purposes right which one has paid you well, is it possible that your fine art is paying you more financially now in, in terms of financial rewards than the hustle in photography? Um, the thing is, the two of them actually have their time. There are times when, there are times when um, I get more money from art. There are times when I don't get money from art and I get money from photography. But I would say that more money comes from art for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are really times when I don't even make money from art. I now make lots of money I'm from I'm just going to ignore the fact that you're separating photography from art. On behalf <laughs> of all of us that are vexing for you for saying this. Why people get to shot? <laughs> yeah, but I guess what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, you you also do like business. Now, we're not talking about your creative expression as a photographer, right? I'm talking about the, those creative experiments and and things or part, using using photography to participate in open calls and um, art exhibitions. The one about, you know, hey, I want to do a photo shoot. What's your story with that? Because uh, we were talking about how how you listened to the session with August Udo, mm-hmm. and you said you couldn't, you couldn't relate. Yeah. Yeah, why is that? Um, you made mention of um, art, um, artists actually um charging according to their worth and um really just charging them and not just creating for their portfolio right opportunities where they can actually make money they shouldn't just give themselves the excuse that okay i'm just going to do it for my portfolio right well it's and he's, and he's speaking <laughs> you, you must realize that he was speaking to people who are in the practice of photography professionally yeah even if you're an emerging professional photographer do you understand? There's yeah. photography as a hobby. There's photography as now my work be this. Do you understand? Yeah. And you need to go about it that way because we're 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 an industry, right? Whether we see it like that or not. And one person's mess up is it <laughs> affects every everyone of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're, you know, he, he was right to say that. I mean, you have your own views. And yeah, I really was right to actually. Hear, I really completely. want to hear, you know, why you couldn't relate, but. He was really speaking to those who need that wake up. Like, yeah, you sleep there and you realize that time and time will go by, and um, you, you've done, you've not done much for yourself because, yeah, you need to earn a living, right? You need to be able to put food on the table, and unlike you, some other people out there, photography is just what they have. True. Yeah, they they couldn't they couldn't you know. Um, hustle their way into um, finding other forms of creative expression, or yeah, they've not that they've not seen themselves as well positioned or established in other aspects to earn a living. And photography is what they have. But if they are now still going about it in the wrong way, they they won't profit from it on the long run. And yeah, that's who wants that, right? Who wants that? And he's just really speaking as someone who cares for the photography industry as a whole you know and for people who have a passion to excel yeah in that field so but let me know let me know i want to see it from your perspective and from the perspective of those who kind of are in the same place as yourself you know as as an emerging photographer um augusto was actually right i mean i learned a lot i mean it's what he said was supposed to um, also encourage artists um artists to do the right thing right but if I have to like relate it to what's going on in Nigeria and um, the also spirit and all that's coming from an imagined artist's um, um, 
side, mm-hmm. right? It, I can't completely relate because there are times when it's actually necessary. There are times when you just find yourself in a situation where you actually just do the job for portfolio sake. So um, you probably use it um, as as an example to get another job. I don't know if you get me. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was I mentioned earlier about one of my friends who wasn't charging right. I don't even think I'm charging right. I don't think I'm charging enough, mm-hmm. right, for what I do. But then I was talking to a friend recently, and I was supposed to like give him a job to edit. I I couldn't do them because my laptop was bad. So um, I asked him how much he was going to do it, and he said five k to retouch about fifteen images. And I found out weird because it was quite good, right? Quite cheap. He's yeah. Cheap. <laughs> mm. It was the guys. The guys works. Oh, you mean quite his works good. Are yes, good. Oh. but the price was just too cheap, mm. right? And so we spoke. We spoke about it. He asked me for my um, for my rate card, and somehow, somehow, we just got into talking about how much he charges for his own shoots, and he told me that he charges about um thirty. He charges about 30k for like three looks and i was really surprised because i mean for someone doing so well why would you be charging that low how are you able to like how are you able to like keep some money for yourself and all and then he explained to me that it's hard actually getting people who um who would pay him 50k to do three looks that most people comes his way even with all the branding he has on his instagram and all the branding he's done for himself they still expect him to um charge 30k or lower than that and because he has to like pay bills and stuff he has to like just take the job and do it and he himself really doesn't know his worth yet because it seemed like a really cool price to him until i showed him my rate card and was like oh wow that i needed to like pump up his price and even myself listening to like um august august um the podcast on august yeah i I really kind of got inspired because there were things I really wasn't doing right. I wasn't putting some certain things to consideration because I used to consider myself um, a photographer was just shooting for shooting sake mm-hmm. in the past. Like I was just doing it because I really loved it. And um, yeah. I wasn't thinking about the money aspect. I wasn't thinking about wanting to like get equipment, parents and all of that. And when it dawned on me, I realized that it was something that I had, I needed to look into. So. At the point where it dawned on me, I pumped up my price a little and I ensured that my clients knew that, okay, this is how it is now. And if they couldn't come along, then they'll probably have to just look for someone who can fit their own budgets, who can yeah. do it for their own, within their own budget. Yeah. So um, I started getting jobs less, but I mean, I was comfortable with it. Um, you weren't desperate because you diversified and that's exactly what... Ex- he was saying yeah you have more than one source of income exactly you earn from your practice as a fine artist yeah right you sell your paintings right and you earn from that so and you do morals yeah also i forgot to mention that i started calculating my my movements my like transportation cost of feeding and everything and i realized that i wasn't really making any money i mean people were paying me but i wasn't making the money because by the time I calculate all of that, all the money is gone. I'm not getting anything to keep in my pocket. So when I started doing those things, I realized that I needed to like put my price up, not just because I wanted to make the kind of money so so and so person is making, but because I also needed to save money too. So at that point, I, I really just stopped stressing myself, stressing myself in the sense that I wasn't stressing myself for those who couldn't afford, mm-hmm. afford it. Um, I, cause going out there doing all that work really i consider them as free especially when it doesn't fit your budget tell, tell me the most ridiculous offer you've gotten oh fi- um i was called for this same friend who told me about is that guy is <laughs> <laughs> honestly i feel like they visit that guy like so much like so many times yeah. um so he couldn't do a particular job um because yeah. he was in school so he reached out to me we stay in the same estate he reached out to me he told me that there was this lifestyle blogger who wanted to do a shoot she had like 12 outfits and I was in uni lock then, so I had to like come all the way. So he told me that I was going to use his camera and stuff. So I came to the estate. No, before I even came to the estate, he told me that um, she was going to be paying my transport and stuff. So by the time I came around, he then told me that it was going to be like one five for the old job. And I'm like, for, oh, for, for which part? <laughs> per, per shirt or per trouser? Or? For the old thing, for the old top looks. And I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. 
she told me that she was going to pay my transport fine she said she was going to buy buy my food fine but for the workmanship this one thousand five hundred naira i mean like what am i supposed to do with one thousand five hundred naira yeah it's it was quite ridiculous and at that point i just said i couldn't do it and then i'm like you Yo. co- sorry sorry to interrupt you no, sorry this, this is bad um there's this babe uh uh jessica jessica fortunes yeah <laughs> she, she's she's a podcaster and so she shares tips and she's like don't interrupt your <laughs> don't interrupt uh, people you're speaking with like let yeah. them talk i'm sorry to interrupt you um are you fine with me asking how much you pay I know you share the studio space with someone, right? Yeah. Like how much, on an average, how much you pay per year? Okay. Um, um, or how much you are to pay per year, you know, for renting the space where you use for your craft? Uh, okay. Let's, sure. let's assume that it is your house, that you, you, you still live with your parents, right? Yeah, I still okay, live so with Okay, so let's parents. assume that this is your, this is your own house right now. Yeah. Your studio is your house too. Uh, like how much, how, how much does it cost you to pay for rent? I'd I'd give a range because okay. I don't want to be too exact. I yeah, understand. yeah. Okay, so let's just say between the range of seven hundred to one million. Okay, yeah. very good. So if you have that, and then you have someone giving you <laughs> <laughs> one five, <laughs> one five, it was really funny. It's 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 crazy because this is why we're doing this. Like this is exactly why August had to say that because if if you remember what some of what he said was like. These people, his own, like even people that that seem like they are established already, some of them call him and they're like, guy, anything, I beg. Some pe- people don't, don't like don't to pay rage. for stuff. Eh? People don't like to pay for stuff. People don't like to pay for stuff. Yeah. Yeah, this is the truth. Like, who likes to pay for Everyone wants something free. I tell mm-hmm. you, I'm going to give you Domino's Pizza for free now. I bet you grab it from me. I tell you, bring 5K for the Jumbo, Jumbo Park or something. Like, eh, well, I'm, yeah, but free uh, stuff should scare you too well true true yes. true if you're someone who has the right mindset and you work for your money um and you demand people to pay for your stuff <laughs> when someone is giving you stuff for free you won't you won't be that greedy you won't just jump on it and, and yeah people don't even understand they don't understand you when you actually start putting up your price like when you start raising your price they, they feel like it. they feel like pride like, um they feel like you're proud Mm. Do you get they feel like okay what's this person even doing so if it's not as good blah blah just blah, come blah, and blah. try to like just talk just you just down right it's your camera it gets yeah. really because there's there's that aspect too like even when you like when you have to like start thinking of um, bringing up your price and stuff you start considering oh how people feel they'll start thinking that i'm proud blah 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 and all of that but i feel like people should actually not even really care about that um i wouldn't say anybody's actually charging what they what they deserve i don't i, I won't say anybody's actually charging their worth because if i have to like put worth in play um i feel like um it should be more mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. i feel like most times we're just charging based on what we have to like pay for what we need i don't know i don't know if you get me just like what august said i think you're having a good balance now at this point with what bernard Kali said on his episode and what august said because bernard Kali was like you can't make money your goal because <laughs> people can't you can't really pay me mm-hmm. for the value of my work. Yeah, Not really. You can't. You don't, yeah, you can't. So it's it's priceless in a way. But I mean, I have to put food on the table. I have to, you know, go about my work. By just getting paid yeah. to pay bills. Yes, pay so bills. I really <laughs> just. But then you need to be able to afford to get what you want sometimes and not just what you need. Yeah. You know, you should be like, you, you want an extra piece of chocolate. You should be able to get that. It should right. not be so hard. Like, I want to it's, go to Santorini. Like, <laughs> I've come to taste it that poverty is not, it does not have to get to that level where we're on the streets begging for arms. That's not yeah. only, Poverty is when you start pricing bottle of water, you're negotiating between 17 naira bottle of water and 15 naira. Becoming very conscious of all this, Ten years I'm detail. like, mm-hmm. I tell myself, Benisa, no, say no to poverty. Get it to that no, point. Don't, let, don't yeah. get it. Let, don't, don't, don't get there. Or someone is owing me a change or <laughs> 15 naira, and then I'm like, eh, do you have sweets or 15? <laughs> <laughs> do you, do you, I, I want to collect get, my money. I must yes. collect my money. Um, it then becomes a lot. Like you just find yourself in that. Uh, let me manage, manage, and you're putting yourself in a smaller box of livelihood yeah you understand like you should be able to afford a decent living and that is why on the other hand though bernard is saying like 
you can't make money to go of your life, but you have to balance this and sell your prints, you know, find other ways to earn. If you know you're not going to charge so high, okay, maybe sell those works again, put them on, um, put them online. Yeah, you, you know, whatever, like several what, editions. whatever works for you. Some of these things, I don't do them myself, yeah. but what works for me works for me. True. Right? And you have to kind of be true to that. So I think it's good that you actually found a way to diversify and still earn something from it and, and then have photography as a place where you can just experiment also and mm -hmm. connect with the creative community through fine art photography yeah. and you know fashion and f uh, what, what? I, I love fashion photography too you do yeah i do fashion photography that's what you see on my page most times yeah yeah yeah. i see that but i i didn't i thought it was just for instance just like calling to white belly fashion photographer <laughs> i wouldn't call her a fashion photographer no. but you see she takes details you know yeah to art. and um so everyone who comes on her comes uh, in front of her camera is properly dressed because i think she's intentional about that yeah, the makeup is on point beautiful the hair is on point everything has to be on point including the outfits even if that person is always wearing like a suit when you come <laughs> to i belly studio you're going to <laughs> you wear something else <laughs> you have to look you know yeah but i wouldn't call her a fashion photographer so I, I just thought that was what was going on with you as well uh, i do fashion photography too it's another aspect of photo uh, photography that i actually enjoy yeah it's another aspect you know i, I was know. going to say just free tip right so it's not really a tip but mm -hmm. i was just imagining because you said like like you're still experimenting when yeah. it comes to photography um you know kenny day wiley yeah i do yeah mm -hmm. yeah are you a fan yeah i actually like his works is is a painter I, I i see i see something similar between both of you i know it's that might sound weird, but here's what I mean. Okay. And this is something, this is one of the reasons why I really wanted to meet with you on Sova. And it's because, oh, aside from the fact that, let me mention his name, Ola Oluwa Adamu. <laughs> yeah, that is. Super universal, my yeah. G. <laughs> my G from afar. You know, apart from the fact that he was like, I want to have fair on. I'm like, okay, yeah, you, you, you represent. Thank you for representing. <laughs> I'm going to get her. Um, so, Kendi Wiley does something that I think you do. We probably don't do it at his level because there's a Kendi Wiley huh? level, of course. Boss. <laughs> He's a boss, yeah. right? Um, which is he shows he shows us his process. He shares, you know, he's he represents himself. He tells his own story shows us his art journey he connects with people through interviews features and all of that i mm -hmm. think it's something that you do yeah. i think it's very important that uh, you said you used to be extroverted and at some point you had to cut down that <laughs> to make it to focus you had to shape your identity or something <laughs> right. to focus. but however like i'm sure some of these things you, you probably don't do them because it's so sweet. So I think it's time consuming, even for me, to create content for myself and put it out. Is it not time consuming? Honestly. <laughs> it's time consuming Honestly. to follow up with social media, responses, con thinking of, oh, which one should follow the last one that I did, you know, and yeah. all of that. Uh, I think it, it, it's, it's time consuming, but making that effort at this time and age i think it is important very necessary yeah because no one no one's going to tell your story or represent you like you do and the more you do that what you're really telling people is i'm an authority in this thing i know my my stuff just yeah. that no you're 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 reaffirming who you are as as a, as an artist as a photographer as a creative and you're really sharing that with people and human connection these days is very important for us and we do that when we are seeing each other <laughs> from time to time because social media is so flooded right yeah. it might not work for everyone of course but i'm just saying like kudos to you for that right thank you and yeah so that's that's on one aspect for kind of wiley now onto the other thing about yeah where i see you could experiment you know he does this thing where he takes pictures like, have you seen his behind the scenes of some of the, his master paintings? Uh, not really. You know Lynette Yadom? Nope. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you probably know her work. But, mm -hmm. so, for instance, like, he would, he would make, he would do, like, a setup, like a set design. Yeah. And take the picture and then use that for his reference. Okay. But the process of the 
picture itself is a lot of work. <laughs> Do you understand? It takes lots of um, detailing. It, yes, it, lots of detailing. But guess what? He can afford that now. He can afford that. I don't expect any less from him. So I, I feel like with the way you're going in the future or in the nearest future, that could be you too with um, even your movement, your your movement as a jag uh, jagai hey, jagai now, a right? Jagai yeah. A jagai <laughs> uh, in your art, like you could also find a way to reflect that in in photography, where you're able to bring your model into a particular set and you put some things in place and yeah. you know, there's a lot of constructions and then next thing you know you're making a masterpiece. So really like explore like keep doing it like i'm just i'm just i'm just really blowing your trumpet here because <laughs> i'm a big fan too um Shit. yeah is there something you really from experience from so far your experience truly just just keep it real with your own experience right you've not been in the game for so long so just be true and i hope you you speak to someone out there who's really just starting also or confused like oh i'm good at fashion and then i'm good at photography and then i actually enjoy my work as a, a chemist i'm um, sorry <coughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Benita. Okay, so I, and I actually enjoy my work as a chemist, but I don't know what to do. I'm confused. You know, um, what 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 would you have to say to that person, um, or anything, anything really? I I want you to speak to someone who's coming from where. Speak to your younger self. You know, mm-hmm. the, someone who was at that point where you used to be, um, or even at the point where you are now, but doesn't even know that it's a blessing to be in the process. Like, what do you really have to say? Yeah. Okay, so I'll say two things, and the two things is going to be based on like um, two experiences, my friend's own and mine. Um, so if you if you ever find yourself in a space where, okay, let me put it this way, my friend is a medical doctor, sorry, pharmacist actually, and um, before he graduated from Lutz, he we used to take pictures together and stuff. What, what's Lutz? Sorry. Lutz, he said he, before he graduated from Lutz. Yes, Lagos. I'm imagining someone in US now listening. Lagos University Teaching Hospital, <laughs> Lutz. He just graduated from Lagos University Teaching Hospital, and um, I just noticed he wasn't creating as he wasn't creating at all, wasn't taking pictures, and f- for someone who used to be so passionate about photography, it was quite surprising. So I reached out to him. I'm like, Yo, what's up? And he was like, I'm that. He wasn't really having so much time because he had to like save lives and all of that uh um he really likes photography but it's just he's just really thinking he's a man and he has to cater someday for his family so he mm. really needs to go probably apply for masters to in pharmacy and just figure out his own life from there i'm like do you really like photography still he said yes really likes it but he gets scared to use his camera because he's been so distant from it and i'm like okay so why are you thinking now it was like he really doesn't know i'm like i think you should actually still try because there are ways you can actually just balance things i mean it's not exactly going to be easy but you don't necessarily have to like take pictures you used to take before you can actually take pictures even where you work i i mean you mentioned about taking pictures at podcasts and stuff yeah, um, yeah, yeah. getting documentaries of um photographers and stuff so you can connect with photography like you used to yeah it's it. just i just noticed now like i've taken pictures <laughs> of everyone i you know in, interviewed and over time who knows it's going to be like a, a body of work in itself yeah I, I might not get all the time in the world to do all kinds of photography but true put value on the one that you can yeah exactly because as you're talking about loot right now as you're talking about loot right now i'm thinking about um mercy ships i don't know if you know this organization called mercy ships but you should check it out like on ig they do great stuff mm-hmm. and and there's someone they always have photographers in in-house documenting you know the behind the scenes of the works and all of that now that might not exactly work if he's a hands-on person at the clinic but he could even give like testimonies mm-hmm. of people he's um he's worked with or cared for yeah. at the hospital to help them get better True. you know or just give like some documentaries basically i know nigerian um like our society is very tricky when it comes to <laughs> access and pictures Actually, but you never know if it's a place that they've come to know that you're one of them and you have that access you could take pictures and tell your story in fact the best kind of photography is the kind that you enjoy honestly yeah 
Honestly, the one you have access to is you can only tell the story you have an access to tell. You cannot tell story about where you wish to tell it. You, mm-hmm. you even if you wish for it, you need to get access to that place. Now, if you have access somewhere and you're caught up in that activity, you might as well just carry your camera along to work and from time to time make make documentaries or honestly, yeah, you don't have to like just it. give it all up like that. And all I'm really trying to say in essence is that. Um, there are a lot of us who actually find ourselves in situations like that where we have to uh, think about other things, especially men who have to like bother about, okay, one day when they have to like feed their family and they're not able to feed them. Women who would have to probably give up their their passion so they can who pay think attention. Who they have to give up their passion? People have that mentality yeah. that they have to like, um, that at some point when they start up a family they would have to like pay attention to their kids and their right. so there's no there's they, they don't have enough time to actually um take um focus on their passion and stuff so i'm really just talking about people who find themselves in that situation where um all hope is lost um photography is something you really like but you really have to like think of other things you really have to think of um catering for your family catering for yourself and all of that i feel like there's a way you can still balance things. You'll find, you'll find it very frustrating. I mean, lots of creatives actually get frustrated. It comes with the package. It's necessary evil, do you get? So, like, mm-hmm. I feel like when, when stuff like that happen, you really, you really need to just find a way around it. You don't really just need to give it up unless you want to, unless you realize that, okay, this thing is, isn't really for me. Maybe I was just doing it because I wanted to, because of peer pressure. But if you feel like it's something you want to do, there's no point actually giving it up. And then coming from my own side of the old story, right? Um, I would still talk about the frustration aspects because there were times when I actually got really frustrated and I'm like, okay, this photography thing, how am I really going to do it? How am I going to, um, how am I going to like survive with it? Like, is it really making any sense and everything? Um, how do I balance it with arts? How do I balance it with a side also? Or how do I balance it with a main also rather, mm-hmm. right? Um, it got really confusing at some point because people were also confusing me with uh, my epic one side. If I do this, yeah, yeah, splitting yourself yourself uh, into and they halves. probably thought they were they meant like they probably meant well i mean like they yeah. probably meant well <laughs> to give you yeah um, guidance. <laughs> so um if you ever find yourself in that situation all i can also say is that you need to just you're the only person who can actually just believe in yourself as much more than any other person so you need to just hold on to that you need to believe in yourself you need to allow allow yourself feel it's necessary if you don't feel, if you don't make mistakes, you won't learn. So, like, you need to allow yourself to feel. But once you feel, you need to get back up. Because it's the only way you can move forward. So, yeah. Expect lots of downsides. But also expect to, like, get back up. That's, like, basically all I think I have to say for now. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Epe. Yeah. No, no long thing. You want to say something else? Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't thought re- you. I thought I, you. I, 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 I don't remember actually. Think I don't remember. Two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was going to talk about um parents too. There are a lot of creatives who actually don't have acceptance from family or mm. friends and stuff, and you're going to find yourself lost in so many times. I used to ch- chase acceptance too. I lost myself. I wanted as acceptance so much that I was really pleasing my parents. Like I was just doing what they wanted me to do. I was really just doing art because I wanted to prove to them that was something, mm. right? And I realized that I wasn't enjoying it. I was basically just trying to find the easy way to blow. Mm. I just wanted to blow. Mm-hmm. Do you get? I didn't want to. I didn't have the plan to like impact. It was along the line I realized that that wasn't for me. I wanted to do more. So I started focusing on myself some more. I didn't really have so much attention, but along the line they started hearing from outside that okay your daughter did this we saw your daughter here. we saw your daughter this and they were curious and then they said okay you know what if i were coming to your studio we're coming to see what you're doing are you being wayward are you doing something else where are you getting this money where are you getting this um i won't say fame but mm. yeah and then they came around and they were really surprised i <laughs> i dropped down i well, i was i was in tears because i mean i never really saw them coming right so um if you find yourself in that situation where you don't really have as much support man i feel like you should just do your best to do your best to do the best for you mm. right people will come along you won't get the attention immediately and maybe you need it but 
somehow somehow you don't really need it the attention you need is from yourself and from the ones who truly care at that particular point those who don't give the attention probably don't really understand they don't see it you're the one who sees your own you're the one who sees where you're headed so um you just need to give them some time some time for yourself to create some time for for them to understand and then finally when they do trust me they would actually come around and it goes I think gets better from that point. It gets better. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. You're welcome. And with this, <laughs> I hope we've been able to convince you and not confuse you I that feel. photography is the way forward. Inspire to aspire, <laughs> so, to aspire. <laughs> so you <laughs> cannot, I don't know. So you can <laughs> perspire to Perspi- inspire. Yeah. So. <laughs> yep. Signing out, Mommy Flo. And. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, uh, no no uh, guys and DJ Jaga. Wow. <laughs> has, to, has to be dried. Just don't forget. Start of the package. It has to be very <laughs> guys bye Jai. <Jerry>. Uh, <laughs>